Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. So I have a fascinating puzzle, an absolutely mind-numbing in-game study that I'd like to share with you guys that I think you can learn a lot from. So before anybody pauses the video to try to solve, let me avoid any mass confusion or chaos by pointing out that the bottom left-hand corner of the board is the A1 square. So Black's pieces are actually moving down the board and they are threatening to promote a bunch of pawns. It is white to play, but first I would like to ask you guys if you think this is winning for white, if it's winning for black, or if you think white can secure a draw in this position. What does your gut tell you? So think about that before you actually try to solve. Okay, so once you've decided which of those three scenarios applies here, Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the best continuation for white. Pause the video now. Okay, so I titled this position, Engine Cannot Evaluate the Position Correctly, puzzle number three. I've already put out two other videos on the channel dealing with chess engines that can't find the correct move or maybe have misevaluated the position. So I'm going to lump this third video into a series called Engine Fails where there appears to be a bit of a glitch with the engine on that particular position. So I selected this puzzle position from a chess book I own, and I picked it for several reasons other than the obvious engine misevaluation. First, this in-game study features one of the main things we've been discussing on the channel in the most recent videos, especially in our tactics recognition lessons, which is simply counting the number of checks we have and considering every checking move. That's going to happen a lot. Second thing this puzzle features is how powerful the color complex of chess can be. You'll notice that almost all of Black's pawns are on dark squares. So that means we're going to be operating and playing on these light squares. Next are trapped pieces, which we also talked about in Tactics Recognition Part 2. And guys, you'll see that the Black Queen is the saddest queen I've ever seen in my entire life. She's going to remain in prison the entire time. Finally, this in-game study is going to feature a brand new tactic that we haven't talked about on this channel yet, and that is the concept of triangulation, which I think is best illustrated here. So in this diagram, we have A squared plus B squared. Oops, wrong triangulation. So just a quick explanation of what triangulation is in chess. It involves a situation where both kings are in close proximity to each other, and one side is trying to waste a move, lose a move, or lose a, lose a tempo on purpose to gain an advantage. So for example, let's assume there are a couple of the pawns here. For whatever reason, the black king can only shuffle back and forth between the F5 and the E5 squares. And so if this white's turn to move, white will never be able to go up the board because the black king will always be able to stay in front. This is called having the opposition. But watch what happens when the king does a little right triangle triangulation. We go here, black king goes there, we go down, and then we complete the triangle, right? We just did a triangle. Now it's black's turn to move. So now they have to move first. And now maybe white can go up the board or whatever, and they have some kind of advantage. Okay, back to the original puzzle. So the answer to this puzzle is, believe it or not, this is winning for white. This is actually a force may in, wait for it, 64 moves. That's right, a mate in 64. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah, crazy stuff. This is one of the longest forced chatmate sequences I'm aware of. I know there are a few out there on YouTube in the hundreds, but 64, that's pretty long. And equally surprising is that the engine can't find it. So I have my window open here so you guys can see what the chess.com engine is showing. It's been sitting here for a while at a depth of 99 and you can see it's showing triple zeros saying it's a dead draw now i don't necessarily always trust the chess.com engine i have my own personal chess computer software that i use that has the latest version of stockfish 17 that was just released in september 24 this is october 24 about a month later so here is a picture of my engine you can see my engine is sitting at a depth of 128 which is exactly twice 64 moves and my engine can't find it either
Okay, let's get down to the actual moves. I imagine a large percentage of you guys originally said this is a draw for white. You probably saw that we have a discovered check on the king. We can take the bishop. Discovered check. The king has to go to b1. We can take f5, take the bishop with check. Now, pay attention. Keep in mind that this king can never, ever, ever go to c1 as long as the queen is on this diagonal because that would just simply be checkmate, of course. So the king has to go back to a2. And you probably saw something like queen d5 check, king here, queen d3 check, back, and we can just repeat moves. And you're correct. That would be a draw. However, we have something better than that. Okay, so as I go through this whole 64 move sequence, I'm definitely not going to ask you guys to pause the video every time. That's going to take way too long. If you want to pause the video, I'll slow down maybe a split second in between moves, and you can just pause at will. So the first couple of moves we're going to make are the same as the drawing line. We are going to take the bishop on c3. That's a discovered check on the king. King has to go to b1. We're going to capture the knight on f5. That comes with check. Again, he can't go here, or that would be mate. So the king back in his corner on a2. Check on f7. King back to b1. And we don't want to take this knight here because we want our captures to come with check. So instead of taking the knight, we give a check on h7. King back to a2, and now we take the knight with check. Okay, another check on h7, back to a2. Check on f7, back to b1. Check on f5, back to a2. Now, from this point, we are going to live primarily on these four light squares. Because remember, all of black's pawns are on dark squares. So the queen is going to make a living on e4, c4, d5, and e6. Okay, so from here, we are going to play queen to d5, check. King back to b1. Okay, queen on e4. King back to a2. Queen to c4. King back to b1. And now we can take the rook with check. Okay, king back to a2. Back to c4, check. King back to b1. And again, we don't want to take this rook at this point because it doesn't come with check. We need to take this knight first. So we're going to play queen to e4, king back to a2. Okay, we can't take this yet, so we have to do this little maneuver. Queen to d5, king back to b1. Now we can take the knight on h1 check. King back to a2. we got to keep the checks coming. Queen to d5 check. King back to b1. Queen to d3. King back to a2. And again, we cannot take this rook because we allow the queen to come out and black is winning. So we have to sneak in this check on c4 first. King back to b1. And now this will be the first time that we haven't taken a piece with check. So we are going to take the rook here. But notice that the queen is still trapped. She cannot go to a2. If she goes to a2, guess what? Whoops. That's checkmate. Game over. So the queen cannot get out of her box. She has to stay there. So now, again, the only thing that black can really do is to go to a2 or start moving some of these pawns. And so what we're going to do is we're going to wait. We're going to make some waiting moves, and we're going to use triangulation, which I'll show you here in just a moment. And we're just going to simply snap up all of these pawns and get into a position where black actually runs out of moves. Notice here, guys. We are on move 20, and the engine is still showing triple zeros across the board. It still can't find the force mate, which is fascinating to me. So here we're going to play queen to c4 check, and now is here's where we're going to start the triangulation. And here is the start of our Pythagorean theorem right triangle. Okay, So queen to e4 check, king to a2, queen to e6 check, king back to b1, and we want for the rest of the game, we want our queen to be on c4 when it's black's turn to move. And that's why it's so important that we have this little triangulation here. So queen to c4, and now it's black's turn to move. So again, they cannot play queen here because that's mate. They cannot move the king anywhere, so the only thing they have is some kind of pawn push. So I'm going to show you the actual best lines that black can play because the order in which they push these pawns actually will matter. So they're going to, I'm going to push them in the order that will give black the most resistance that takes us all the way to the 64 move checkmate. So here they're going to play pawn to g2. 
Okay, so every time one of these pawns gets to a light square, we're going to have to do our triangulation to pick these guys off on the light squares. So here's the queen to e4 check, king to a2. Again, we can't take the pawn because the queen gets out. So we have to play the check on d5, force the king back to b1, then take the pawn on g2. Okay, and again, black can't do anything. If they push the pawn, we'll just start taking stuff. So the best thing that black can do is just go back in the corner. And guess what we do? Queen d5 check here, and now we start our triangulation again. Okay, so queen to c4, it's black's turn to move. They have to push their pawn. And here we go with our triangulation, e4, e6, back to c4. Because here, the queen's on c4, but it's our turn to move. And just for grins and giggles, there's a lot of geometry in chess, triangles, squares. I used to teach geometry. For all you math folks out there, we have our right triangle. If we assume that we're playing on a larger chessboard, and the length of one of these squares has a length of 3 times the square root of 32 inches, then what is the length of the diagonal from this corner of the right triangle down to this corner of the right triangle? You do not need Google. You do not need a pen or a piece of paper or a calculator. You do not even need Pythagorean theorem. If you know what to do, you can do all of this in your head. Calculate it, leave your answer in the comments below, and I will be marginally impressed. Okay, so back to our triangulation. Check on E4. Check on E6. Back to C4. Now it's Black's turn to move. They move another pawn. <clears throat> back to triangulation. Okay, black has to move another pawn. Now this pawn is on a light square, so it's time to go get it. Check. Check on e6. King's on b1. Now pick it up. Again, black has nothing better than to just go back to a2. Check on e6. Okay, now we can go to c4, and it's black's turn to move. They have to move a pawn. It's not on a light square yet, so back to triangulation. Okay. And oh, looky look, guys. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back a few moves. Here we are on move 40, and the engine is still saying this is a draw. And then after now, welcome, engine. Welcome to the party. Now it finally sees the mate. It sees a mate in 24 from here on move 40 for the, the mate in 64. Welcome to the party. Okay. Back to C4, black has to push a pawn, so they push C6, triangulation. Okay, they have to push another pawn, triangulation. They have to push another pawn. It's on a light square, so let's go get it. E6, pick up the pawn. Okay, back to E6. Now here they have to block with C4 to prolong the game as long as possible, but we take that. Okay, now it's our turn to move, so what do we have to do? Triangulation. Now it's Black's turn to move. They have to push a pawn. We snap that off. Okay, now here's the one time we go back to F7. Back to C4, it's Black's turn to move. We pick off that pawn. They have to go back to A2. Check on E6. Back to C4. And Black does not have a move. It is move 63. If they move the king to C1, that's mate. That's a mate and one. If they move the queen up, queen f1, that's a mate and one. And finally, my personal favorite is the queen looked at Medusa, became a stone statue, and the queen never moved, so they have to push the a2 pawn. And oh my goodness, on move 64, we have an amazing, amazing knockout. My goodness. Ow! Yes! That's awesome! <laughs> that is definitely awesome. So, anyway, that just uh, really showcases a lot of cool stuff. The triangulation tactic, you know, restricted pieces going back and forth, the trap queen, operating on the light squares, finding moves that come with check, a lot of stuff that we've talked about lately. So, um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you think these videos are helpful and you would like me to continue posting them, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.